Israel, officially the State of Israel, is a country in Western Asia. It is situated on the southeastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea and the northern shore of the Red Sea, and shares borders with Lebanon to the north, Syria to the northeast, Jordan to the east, and Egypt to the southwest, it is also bordered by the Palestinian territories of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip to the east and west, respectively. Tel Aviv is the economic and technological center of the country, while its seat of government is in its proclaimed capital of Jerusalem, although international recognition of Israeli sovereignty over the city remains in dispute. Israel, as evidence of the earliest hominid migrations out of Africa. Canaanite tribes are archaeologically attested in the region since the Middle Bronze Age, while the kingdoms of Israel and Judah emerged, during the Iron Age. The Neo-Assyrian Empire destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel around 720 BCE, the wider region was subsequently conquered by the Babylonian, Persian, and Hellenistic empires. The Maccabean Revolt led to an independent Hasmonean kingdom by 110 BCE, which became a client state of the Roman Republic in 63 BCE, following which the Herodian dynasty was installed by 37 BCE, and in 6 CE, the former kingdom was finally incorporated into the Roman Empire as the province of Judea. A series of unsuccessful Jewish revolts against the Romans that broke out during the 1st and 2nd centuries resulted in the destruction of Jerusalem, the expulsion of many Jews, and the renaming of Iudea to Syria-Palestina. In the 7th century CE, the Byzantine rule Levant was taken by Arab forces and incorporated into the Rashidun Caliphate. It remained in Muslim hands until the First Crusade of 1096-1099 re-established a Christian sovereign presence, Crusader control was partly dismantled by the Ayyubids in 1187, but ultimately lasted until 1291. The Mamluk Sultanate of Egypt extended its control over the region by the end of the 13th century until its defeat in 1516 to the Ottoman Empire. During the 19th century, a national awakening among Jews led to the founding of Zionism, a movement that espouses the return of a Jewish homeland in Palestine, also known as the Land of Israel, which was followed by the immigration of diaspora Jews. Following World War I, Britain controlled the entirety of the territory of what makes up Israel, the Palestinian territories, and Jordan as a League of Nations mandate. After World War II, the newly formed United Nations adopted the Partition Plan for Palestine in 1947, recommending the creation of independent Arab and Jewish states, and an internationalized Jerusalem. The plan was accepted by the Jewish agency but rejected by Arab leaders. Following a civil war within mandatory Palestine between Yeshuv and Palestinian Arab forces, Israel declared independence at the termination of the British Mandate. The war internationalized into the 1948 Arab-Israeli war between Israel and several surrounding Arab states and concluded with the 1949 armistice agreements that saw Israel in control of most of the former Mandate territory, while the West Bank and Gaza were held by Jordan and Egypt respectively. Israel has since fought several wars with Arab countries, and since the Six-Day War in June 1967 has occupied several territories, and continues to occupy the Golan Heights and the Palestinian territories of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip, though whether Gaza remains occupied following the Israeli disengagement is disputed. Israel has effectively annexed East Jerusalem and the Golan Heights, though these actions have been rejected as illegal by the international community, and established settlements within the occupied territories, which the international community also considers illegal under international law. Efforts to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict have not resulted in a final peace agreement, while Israel has signed peace treaties with both Egypt and Jordan, and more recently has normalized relations with a number of other Arab countries. In its basic laws, Israel defines itself as a Jewish and democratic state, and as the nation-state of the Jewish people. The country is a liberal democracy with a parliamentary system, proportional representation, and universal suffrage. The Prime Minister serves as head of government and the Keset, is the unicameral legislature. Israel is a developed country and an OECD member, and has a population of over 9 million people as of 2021. It has the world's 31st largest economy by nominal GDP, 
and is the most developed country that is currently in conflict. The standard of living in Israel is the highest in the Middle East, and the country ranks high on the global HDI list. Israel also ranks among world's top countries by percentage of citizens with military training, percentage of citizens holding a tertiary education degree, research and development spending by GDP percentage, women's safety, life expectancy, innovativeness, and happiness. Chapter 1 – Etymology Under the British mandate, the whole region was known as Palestine, lit. Palestine. Upon independence in 1948, the country formally adopted the name State of Israel, Arabic, Dawlat Israel, after other proposed historical and religious names including Land of Israel, Eva, Zion, and Judea, were considered but rejected, while the name Israel was suggested by Ben Goyon and passed by a vote of 6 to 3. In the early weeks of independence, the government chose the term Israeli to denote a citizen of Israel, with the formal announcement made by Minister of Foreign Affairs Moshe Sharet that the names Land of Israel and Children of Israel have historically been used to refer to the Biblical Kingdom of Israel and the entire Jewish people respectively. The name Israel persists slash rules, though after Hosea 12 4 often interpreted as struggle with God, in these phrases refers to the patriarch Jacob who, according to the Hebrew Bible, was given the name after he successfully wrestled with the angel of the Lord. Jacob's twelve sons became the ancestors of the Israelites, also known as the twelve tribes of Israel or children of Israel. Jacob and his sons had lived in Canaan but were forced by famine to go into Egypt for four generations, lasting 430 years, until Moses, a great-great-grandson of Jacob, led the Israelites back into Canaan during the Exodus. The earliest known archaeological artifact to mention the word Israel as a collective is the men of Postile of ancient Egypt. Chapter 2 – History Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Prehistory The oldest evidence of early humans in the territory of modern Israel, dating to 1.5 million years ago, was found in Ubaidia near the Sea of Galilee. Other notable Paleolithic sites include the caves Tabin, Kizem, and Monot. The oldest fossils of anatomically modern humans found outside Africa are the Skull and Kafte hominins, who lived in the area that is now northern Israel 120,000 years ago. Around 10th millennium BCE, the Nachfian culture existed in the area. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Antiquity The early history of the territory is unclear, 104 Modern archaeology has largely discarded the historicity of the narrative in the Torah concerning the patriarchs, the Exodus, and the conquest of Canaan described in the Book of Joshua, and instead use the narrative as constituting the Israelites' national myth. During the Late Bronze Age, large parts of Canaan formed vassal states paying tribute to the new Kingdom of Egypt, whose administrative headquarters lay in Gaza. Ancestors of the Israelites are thought to have included ancient Semitic-speaking peoples native to this area, 78-79 The Israelites and their culture, according to the modern archaeological account, did not overtake the region by force, but instead branched out of these Canaanite peoples and their cultures through the development of a distinct monolatristic, and later monotheistic, religion centered on Yahweh. The archaeological evidence indicates a society of village-like centers, but with more limited resources and a small population. Villages had populations of up to 300 or 400, which lived by farming and herding, and were largely self-sufficient, economic interchange was prevalent. Writing was known and available for recording, even in small sites. While it is unclear if there was ever a united monarchy, there is well-accepted archaeological evidence referring to Israel in the Man of Postile which dates to about 1200 BCE, and the Canaanites are archaeologically attested in the Middle Bronze Age. There is debate about the earliest existence of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah and their extent and power, but historians and archaeologists agree that a kingdom of Israel existed by ca. 900 BCE, 169 to 195 and that a kingdom of Judah existed by ca. 700 BCE. The Kingdom of Israel was the more prosperous of the two kingdoms and soon developed into a regional power, during the days of the Omride dynasty, it controlled Samaria, 
Galilee, the Upper Jordan Valley, the Sharon and large parts of the Transjordan. It was destroyed around 720 BCE, when it was conquered by the Neo-Assyrian Empire. The Kingdom of Judah later became a client state of first the Neo-Assyrian Empire and then the Neo-Babylonian Empire. In 586 BCE, the Babylonians conquered Judah. According to the Hebrew Bible, Solomon's Temple and Jerusalem were destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar II, who subsequently exiled the Jews to Babylon. The defeat was also recorded in the Babylonian Chronicles. The Babylonian exile ended around 538 BCE under the rule of the Medo Persian Cyrus the Great after he captured Babylon. The Second Temple was constructed around 520 BCE. As part of the Persian Empire, the former Kingdom of Judah became the province of Judah with different borders, covering a smaller territory. The population of the province was greatly reduced from that of the kingdom, archaeological surveys showing a population of around 30,000 people in the 5th to 4th centuries BCE, 308. Chapter 2 Section 3, Classical Period With successive Persian rule, the autonomous province Yehud Medinata was gradually developing back into urban society, largely dominated by Judeans. The Greek conquests largely skipped the region without any resistance or interest. Incorporated into the Ptolemaic and finally the Seleucid empires, the southern Levant was heavily Hellenized, building the tensions between Judeans and Greeks. The conflict erupted in 167 BCE with the Maccabean Revolt, which succeeded in establishing an independent Hasmonean kingdom in Judah, which later expanded over much of modern Israel and parts of Jordan and Lebanon, as the Seleucids gradually lost control in the region. The Roman Republic invaded the region in 63 BCE, first taking control of Syria, and then intervening in the Hasmonean Civil War. The struggle between pro Roman and pro Parthian factions in Judea eventually led to the installation of Herod the Great and consolidation of the Herodian kingdom as a vassal Judean state of Rome. Herod undertook many colossal building projects, including fully rebuilding and enlarging the Second Temple. With the decline of the Herodian dynasty, Judea, transformed into a Roman province, became the site of a violent struggle of Jews against Romans, culminating in the Jewish-Roman wars, ending in wide-scale destruction, expulsions, genocide, and enslavement of masses of Jewish captives. An estimated 1,356,460 Jews were killed as a result of the Great Jewish Revolt, during which the entire city of Jerusalem, including the Second Temple, were destroyed. Few decades later, the Quito's War led to the death of more than 200,000 Jews, and the Bar Kokhba revolt resulted in the death of 580,000 Jewish soldiers. Jewish presence in the region significantly dwindled after the failure of the Bar Kokhba revolt. Nevertheless, there was a continuous small Jewish presence and Galilee became its religious center. The Mishnah and part of the Talmud, central Jewish texts, were composed during the 2nd to 4th centuries, see in Tiberias and Jerusalem. The region came to be populated predominantly by Greco-Romans on the coast and Samaritans in the hill country. Christianity was gradually evolving over Roman paganism, when the area stood under Byzantine rule. Through the 5th and 6th centuries, the dramatic events of the repeated Samaritan revolts reshaped the land, with massive destruction to Byzantine Christian and Samaritan societies and a resulting decrease of the population. After the Persian conquest and the installation of a short-lived Jewish commonwealth in 614 CE, the Byzantine Empire reconquered the country in 628. Chapter 2 Section 4, Middle Ages and Modern History In 634-641 CE, the region, including Jerusalem, was conquered by the Arabs who had recently adopted Islam. Control of the region transferred between the Rashidun Caliphs, Umayyads, Abbasids, Fatimids, Seljuks, Crusaders, and Ayyubids throughout the next three centuries. During the siege of Jerusalem by the First Crusade in 1099, the Jewish inhabitants of the city fought side by side with the Fatimid garrison, and the Muslim population who tried in vain to defend the city against the Crusaders. When the city fell, 
Around 60,000 people were massacred, including 6,000 Jews, seeking refuge in a synagogue. At this time, a full thousand years after the fall of the Jewish state, there were Jewish communities all over the country. Fifty of them are known and include Jerusalem, Tiberias, Ramlai, Ashkelon, Caesarea, and Gaza. According to Albert of Aachen, the Jewish residents of Haifa were the main fighting force of the city, and mixed with Saracen troops, they fought bravely for close to a month until forced into retreat by the Crusader fleet, and land army. In 1165, Maimonides visited Jerusalem and prayed on the Temple Mount, in the Great, Holy House. In 1141, the Spanish Jewish poet Yehuda Halevi issued a call for Jews to migrate to the land of Israel, a journey he undertook himself. In 1187, Sultan Saladin, founder of the Ayyubid dynasty, defeated the Crusaders in the Battle of Hotin and subsequently captured Jerusalem and almost all of Palestine. In time, Saladin issued a proclamation inviting Jews to return and settle in Jerusalem, and according to Judah al-Harazi, they did, from the day the Arabs took Jerusalem, the Israelites inhabited it. Al-Harazi compared Saladin's decree allowing Jews to re-establish themselves in Jerusalem to the one issued by the Persian king Cyrus the Great over 1,600 years earlier. In 1211, the Jewish community in the country was strengthened by the arrival of a group headed by over 300 rabbis from France and England, among them Rabbi Samson ben Abraham of Senators Nechmanides, the 13th century Spanish rabbi and recognized leader of Jewry, greatly praised the land of Israel and viewed its settlement, as a positive commandment incumbent on all Jews. He wrote if the Gentiles wish to make peace, we shall make peace and leave them on clear terms, but as for the land, we shall not leave it in their hands, nor in the hands of any nation, not in any generation. In 1260, control passed to the Momluk sultans of Egypt. The country was located between the two centers of Momluk power, Cairo and Damascus, and only saw some development along the postal road connecting the two cities. Jerusalem, although left without the protection of any city walls since 1219, also saw a flurry of new construction projects centered around the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound on the Temple Mount. In 1266, the Momluk Sultan Bybers converted the Cave of the Patriarchs in Hebron into an exclusive Islamic sanctuary and banned Christians and Jews from entering, who previously had been able to enter it for a fee. The ban remained in place until Israel took control of the building in 1967. In 1470, Isaac B. Mayor Latif arrived from Italy and counted 150 Jewish families in Jerusalem. Thanks to Joseph Saragossi, who had arrived in the closing years of the 15th century, Safed and its environs had developed into the largest concentration of Jews in Palestine. With the help of the Sephardic immigration from Spain, the Jewish population had increased to 10,000 by the early 16th century. In 1516, the region was conquered by the Ottoman Empire. It remained under Turkish rule until the end of the First World War, when Britain defeated the Ottoman forces and set up a military administration across the former Ottoman Syria. In 1660, a Druze revolt led to the destruction of Safed and Tiberias. In the late 18th century, local Arab Sheikh Zahir al-Umar created a de facto independent emirate in the Galilee. Ottoman attempts to subdue the Sheikh failed, but after Zahir's death the Ottomans regained control of the area. In 1799 Governor Jaza Pasha successfully repelled an assault on Acre by troops of Napoleon, prompting the French to abandon the Syrian campaign. In 1834 a revolt by Palestinian Arab peasants broke out against Egyptian conscription and taxation policies under Muhammad Ali. Although the revolt was suppressed, Muhammad Ali's army retreated and Ottoman rule was restored with British support in 1840. Shortly after, the Tanzimat reforms were implemented across the Ottoman Empire. In 1920, after the Allies conquered the Levant during World War I, the territory was divided between Britain and France under the Mandate system, and the British-administered area which included modern-day Israel was named Mandatory Palestine. Chapter 2 Section 5 Zionism and British Mandate. Since the existence of the earliest Jewish diaspora, 
many Jews have aspired to return to Zion and the land of Israel, though the amount of effort that should be spent towards such an aim was a matter of dispute. The hopes and yearnings of Jews living in exile are an important theme of the Jewish belief system. After the Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492, some communities settled in Palestine. During the 16th century, Jewish communities struck roots in the four holy cities, Jerusalem, Tiberias, Hebron, and Safed, and in 1697, Rabbi Yehuda Hachizid led a group of 1,500 Jews to Jerusalem. In the second half of the 18th century, Eastern European opponents of Hasidism, known as the Purushim, settled in Palestine. The first wave of modern Jewish migration to Ottoman-ruled Palestine, known as the First Aliyah, began in 1881, as Jews fled pogroms in Eastern Europe. The First Aliyah laid the cornerstone for widespread Jewish settlement in Palestine. From 1881 to 1903, the Jews had established dozens of settlements and purchased about 350,000 dunams of land. At the same time, the revival of the Hebrew language began among Jews in Palestine, spurred on largely by Eliezer ben Yehuda, a Russian-born Jew who had settled in Jerusalem in 1881. Jews were encouraged to speak Hebrew in the place of other languages, a Hebrew school system began to emerge, and new words were coined or borrowed from other languages for modern inventions and concepts. As a result, Hebrew gradually became the predominant language of the Jewish community of Palestine, which until then had been divided into different linguistic communities that primarily used Hebrew for religious purposes and as a means of communication between Jews with different native languages. Although the Zionist movement already existed in practice, Austro-Hungarian journalist Theodor Herzl is credited with founding political Zionism, a movement that sought to establish a Jewish state in the land of Israel, thus offering a solution to the so-called Jewish question of the European states, in conformity with the goals and achievements of other national projects of the time. In 1896, Herzl published Der Judenstadt, offering his vision of a future Jewish state, the following year he presided over the first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland. The second Aliyah began after the Kishinev pogrom, some 40,000 Jews settled in Palestine, although nearly half of them left eventually. Both the first and second waves of migrants were mainly Orthodox Jews, although the second Aliyah included socialist groups who established the kibbutz movement. Though the immigrants of the second Aliyah largely sought to create communal agricultural settlements, the period also saw the establishment of Tel Aviv in 1909 as the first Hebrew city. This period also saw the appearance of Jewish armed self-defense organizations as a means of defense for Jewish settlements. The first such organization was Bar Jora, a small secret guard founded in 1907. Two years later, larger Hashemar organization was founded as its replacement. During World War I, British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour sent the Balfour Declaration to Baron Rothschild, a leader of the British Jewish community, that stated that Britain intended for the creation of a Jewish national home in Palestine. In 1918, the Jewish Legion, a group primarily of Zionist volunteers, assisted in the British conquest of Palestine. Arab opposition to British rule and Jewish immigration led to the 1920 Palestine riots and the formation of a Jewish militia known as the Haganah in 1920 as an outgrowth of Hashemah, from which the Irgun and Lehi paramilitaries later split off. In 1922, the League of Nations granted Britain the mandate for Palestine under terms which included the Balfour Declaration with its promise to the Jews, and with similar provisions regarding the Arab, Palestinians. The population of the area at this time was predominantly Arab and Muslim, with Jews accounting for about 11%, and Arab Christians about 9.5% of the population. The third and fourth Aliyahs brought an additional 100,000 Jews to Palestine. The rise of Nazism and the increasing persecution of Jews in 1930s Europe led to the fifth Aliyah, with an influx of a quarter of a million Jews. This was a major cause of the Arab Revolt of 1936-39, which was launched as a reaction to continued Jewish immigration, and land purchases. Several hundred Jews and British security personnel were killed, 
while the British Mandate authorities alongside the Zionist militias of the Haganah and Yegan killed 5,032 Arabs and wounded 14,760, resulting in over 10% of the adult male Palestinian Arab population killed, wounded, imprisoned or exiled. The British introduced restrictions on Jewish immigration to Palestine with the White Paper of 1939. With countries around the world turning away Jewish refugees fleeing the Holocaust, a clandestine movement known as Aliyah Bet was organized to bring Jews to Palestine. By the end of World War II, the Jewish population of Palestine had increased to 31% of the total population. Chapter 2 Section 6 After World War II After World War II, the UK found itself facing a Jewish guerrilla campaign over Jewish immigration restrictions, as well as continued conflict with the Arab community over limit levels. The Haganah joined Egan and Lehi in an armed struggle against British rule. At the same time, hundreds of thousands of Jewish Holocaust survivors and refugees sought a new life far from their destroyed communities in Europe. The Haganah attempted to bring these refugees to Palestine in a program called Aliyah Bet in which tens of thousands of Jewish refugees attempted to enter Palestine by ship. Most of the ships were intercepted by the Royal Navy and the refugees rounded up and placed in detention camps in Otlit and Cyprus by the British. On of July 1946, Egan bombed the British administrative headquarters for Palestine, which was housed in the southern wing of the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. A total of 91 people of various nationalities were killed and 46 were injured. The hotel was the site of the Secretariat of the Government of Palestine and the headquarters of the British Armed Forces in Mandatory Palestine and Transjordan. The attack initially had the approval of the Haganah. It was conceived as a response to Operation Agatha, and was the deadliest directed at the British during the Mandate era. The Jewish insurgency continued throughout the rest of 1946 and 1947 despite concerted efforts by the British military and Palestine police force to suppress it. British efforts to mediate a negotiated solution with Jewish and Arab representatives also failed as the Jews were unwilling to accept any solution that did not involve a Jewish state, and suggested a partition of Palestine into Jewish and Arab states while the Arabs were adamant that a Jewish state in any part of Palestine was unacceptable and that the only solution was a unified Palestine under Arab rule. In February 1947, the British referred the Palestine issue to the newly formed United Nations. On 15 May 1947, the General Assembly of the United Nations resolved that the United Nations Special Committee on Palestine be created to prepare for consideration at the next regular session of the Assembly a report on the question of Palestine. In the report of the committee dated 3 September 1947 to the General Assembly, the majority of the committee in Chapter 6 proposed a plan to replace the British mandate with an independent Arab state, an independent Jewish state and the city of Jerusalem the last to be under an international trusteeship system. Meanwhile, the Jewish insurgency continued and peaked in July 1947, with a series of widespread guerrilla raids culminating in the Sargent's affair. After three Egan fighters had been sentenced to death for their role in the Acre prison break, a May 1947 Egan raid on Acre prison in which 27 Egan and Lehi militants were freed, the Egan captured two British sergeants and held them hostage, threatening to kill them if the three men were executed. When the British carried out the executions, the Egan responded by killing both hostages and hanged their bodies from eucalyptus trees, booby-trapping one of them with a mine which injured a British officer as he cut the body down. The hangings caused widespread outrage in Britain and were a major factor in the consensus forming in Britain that it was time to evacuate Palestine. In September 1947, the British cabinet decided that the mandate was no longer tenable, and to evacuate Palestine. According to Colonial Secretary Arthur Creech Jones, four major factors led to the decision to evacuate Palestine, the inflexibility of Jewish and Arab negotiators who were unwilling to compromise on their core positions over the question of a Jewish state in Palestine.
The economic pressure that stationing a large garrison in Palestine to deal with the Jewish insurgency and the possibility of a wider Jewish rebellion and the possibility of an Arab rebellion put on a British economy already strained by World War II, the deadly blow to British patience and pride caused by the hangings of the sergeants, and the mounting criticism the government faced in failing to find a new policy for Palestine in place of the White Paper of 1939. On the 29th of November 1947, the General Assembly adopted Resolution 181 recommending the adoption and implementation of the Plan of Partition with Economic Union. The plan attached to the resolution was essentially that proposed by the majority of the committee in the report of 3 September. The Jewish agency, which was the recognized representative of the Jewish community, accepted the plan. The Arab League and Arab Higher Committee of Palestine rejected it, and indicated that they would reject any other plan of partition. On the following day, 1 December 1947, the Arab Higher Committee proclaimed a three-day strike, and riots broke out in Jerusalem. The situation spiraled into a civil war, just two weeks after the UN vote, Colonial Secretary Arthur Creech Jones announced that the British mandate would end on 15 May 1948, at which point the British would evacuate. As Arab militias and gangs attacked Jewish areas, they were faced mainly by the Haganah, as well as the smaller Irgun and Lehi. In April 1948, the Haganah moved on to the offensive. During this period 250,000 Palestinian Arabs fled or were expelled, due to a number of factors. On 14 May 1948, the day before the expiration of the British mandate, David ben Goyon, the head of the Jewish agency, declared the establishment of a Jewish state in Eretz Israel, to be known as the State of Israel. The only reference in the text of the declaration to the borders of the new state is the use of the term Eretz Israel. The following day, the armies of four Arab countries, Egypt, Syria, Transjordan and Iraq, entered what had been British Mandatory Palestine, launching the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, contingents from Yemen, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and Sudan joined the war. The apparent purpose of the invasion was to prevent the establishment of the Jewish state at inception, and some Arab leaders talked about driving the Jews into the sea. According to Benny Morris, Jews were worried that the invading Arab armies held the intent to slaughter them. The Arab League stated the invasion was to restore law and order and to prevent further bloodshed. After a year of fighting, a ceasefire was declared and temporary borders, known as the Green Line, were established. Jordan annexed what became known as the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, and Egypt occupied the Gaza Strip. The UN estimated that more than 700,000 Palestinians were expelled by or fled from advancing Israeli forces during the conflict, what would become known in Arabic as the Nakba. Some 156,000 remained and became Arab citizens of Israel. Chapter 2 Section 7 Early Years of the State of Israel Israel was admitted as a member of the UN by majority vote on the 11th of May 1949. An Israeli-Jordanian attempt at negotiating a peace agreement broke down after the British government, fearful of the Egyptian reaction to such a treaty, expressed their opposition to the Jordanian government. In the early years of the state, the Labour Zionist movement led by Prime Minister David ben Goyon dominated Israeli politics. The kibbutzim, or collective farming communities, played a pivotal role in establishing the new state. Immigration to Israel during the late 1940s and early 1950s was aided by the Israeli Immigration Department, and the non government sponsored Mossad Lalaya Bet, which organized illegal and clandestine immigration. Both groups facilitated regular immigration logistics like arranging transportation, but the latter also engaged in clandestine operations in countries, particularly in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, where the lives of Jews were believed to be in danger and exit from those places was difficult. Mossad La Alaya Bet was disbanded in 1953. The immigration was in accordance with the One Million Plan. The immigrants came for differing reasons, some held Zionist beliefs or came for the promise of a better life in Israel, 
while others moved to escape persecution or were expelled. An influx of Holocaust survivors and Jews from Arab and Muslim countries to Israel during the first three years increased the number of Jews from 700,000 to 1,400,000. By 1958, the population of Israel rose to 2 million. Between 1948 and 1970, approximately 1,150,000 Jewish refugees relocated to Israel. Some new immigrants arrived as refugees with no possessions and were housed in temporary camps known as Marbarot. By 1952, over 200,000 people were living in these tent cities. Jews of European background were often treated more favorably than Jews from Middle Eastern and North African countries, housing units reserved for the latter were often re-designated for the former, with the result that Jews newly arrived from Arab lands generally ended up staying in transit camps for longer. During this period, food, clothes and furniture had to be rationed in what became known as the austerity period. The need to solve the crisis led Ben Goyon to sign a reparations agreement with West Germany that triggered mass protests by Jews angered at the idea that Israel could accept monetary compensation for the Holocaust. During the 1950s, Israel was frequently attacked by Palestinian Fedayeen, nearly always against civilians, mainly from the Egyptian occupied Gaza Strip, leading to several Israeli reprisal operations. In 1956, the United Kingdom and France aimed at regaining control of the Suez Canal, which the Egyptians had nationalized. The continued blockade of the Suez Canal and Straits of Tehran to Israeli shipping, together with the growing amount of Fedayeen attacks against Israel's southern population, and recent Arab grave and threatening statements, prompted Israel to attack Egypt. Israel joined a secret alliance with the United Kingdom and France and overran the Sinai Peninsula but was pressured to withdraw by the UN in return for guarantees of Israeli shipping rights in the Red Sea via the Straits of Tehran and the Canal. The war, known as the Suez Crisis, resulted in significant reduction of Israeli border infiltration. In the early 1960s, Israel captured Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann in Argentina, and brought him to Israel for trial. The trial had a major impact on public awareness of the Holocaust. Eichmann remains the only person executed in Israel by conviction in an Israeli civilian court. During the spring and summer of 1963 Israel was engaged in a, now declassified diplomatic standoff with the United States due to the Israeli nuclear program. Since 1964, Arab countries, concerned over Israeli plans to divert waters of the Jordan River into the coastal plain, had been trying to divert the headwaters to deprive Israel of water resources, provoking tensions between Israel on the one hand, and Syria and Lebanon on the other. Arab nationalists led by Egyptian President Jamal Abdel Nasser refused to recognize Israel and called for its destruction. By 1966, Israeli-Arab relations had deteriorated to the point of actual battles taking place between Israeli and Arab forces. In May 1967, Egypt massed its army near the border with Israel, expelled UN peacekeepers, stationed in the Sinai Peninsula since 1957, and blocked Israel's access to the Red Sea. Other Arab states mobilized their forces. Israel reiterated that these actions were Jasus belly and, on 5 June, launched a preemptive strike against Egypt. Jordan, Syria and Iraq responded and attacked Israel. In a six-day war, Israel captured and occupied the West Bank from Jordan, the Gaza Strip and Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, and the Golan Heights from Syria. Jerusalem's boundaries were enlarged, incorporating East Jerusalem, and the 1949 Green Line became the administrative boundary between Israel and the occupied territories. Following the 1967 war and the Three Nose Resolution of the Arab League and during the 1967 1970 War of Attrition, Israel faced attacks from the Egyptians in the Sinai Peninsula and from Palestinian groups targeting Israelis in the occupied territories, in Israel proper, and around the world. Most important among the various Palestinian, and Arab groups was the Palestinian Liberation Organization, established in 1964, which initially committed itself to armed struggle as the only way to liberate the homeland. 
In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Palestinian groups launched a wave of attacks against Israeli and Jewish targets around the world, including a massacre of Israeli athletes at the 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich. The Israeli government responded with an assassination campaign against the organizers of the massacre, a bombing and a raid on the PLO headquarters in Lebanon. On 6 October 1973, as Jews were observing Yom Kippur, the Egyptian and Syrian armies launched a surprise attack against Israeli forces in the Sinai Peninsula and Golan Heights, that opened the Yom Kippur War. The war ended on 25 October with Israel successfully repelling Egyptian and Syrian forces but having suffered over 2,500 soldiers killed in a war which collectively took 10 to 35,000 lives in about 20 days. An internal inquiry exonerated the government of responsibility for failures before and during the war, but public anger forced Prime Minister Golda Meir to resign. In July 1976, an airliner was hijacked during its flight from Israel to France by Palestinian guerrillas and landed at Entebbe International Airport, Uganda. Israeli commandos carried out an operation in which 102 out of 106 Israeli hostages were successfully rescued. Chapter 2 Section 8, Further Conflict and Peace Process The 1977 Keset elections marked a major turning point in Israeli political history as Menachem Begin's Likud party took control from the Labour Party. Later that year, Egyptian President Anwar el-Sadat made a trip to Israel and spoke before the Knesset in what was the first recognition of Israel by an Arab head of state. In the two years that followed, Sadat and Begin signed the Camp David Accords and the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. In return, Israel withdrew from the Sinai Peninsula and agreed to enter negotiations over an autonomy for Palestinians in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. On of March 1978, a PLO guerrilla raid from Lebanon led to the Coastal Road Massacre. Israel responded by launching an invasion of southern Lebanon, to destroy the PLO bases south of the Litany River. Most PLO fighters withdrew, but Israel was able to secure southern Lebanon until a UN force and the Lebanese army could take over. The PLO soon resumed its policy of attacks against Israel. In the next few years, the PLO infiltrated the south and kept up a sporadic shelling across the border. Israel carried out numerous retaliatory attacks by air and on the ground. Meanwhile, Begin's government provided incentives for Israelis to settle in the occupied West Bank, increasing friction with the Palestinians in that area. The Basic Law, Jerusalem, capital of Israel, passed in 1980, was believed by some to reaffirm Israel's 1967 annexation of Jerusalem by government decree, and reignited international controversy over the status of the city. No Israeli legislation has defined the territory of Israel and no act specifically included East Jerusalem therein. In 1981 Israel effectively annexed the Golan Heights, although annexation was not recognized internationally. The international community largely rejected these moves, with the UN Security Council declaring both the Jerusalem law, and the Golan Heights law null and void. Israel's population diversity expanded in the 1980s and 1990s. Several waves of Ethiopian Jews immigrated to Israel since the 1980s, while between 1990 and 1994, immigration from the post-Soviet states increased Israel's population by 12% on 7 June 1981, during the Iran-Iraq War. The Israeli Air Force destroyed Iraq's sole nuclear reactor under construction just outside Baghdad, in order to impede Iraq's nuclear weapons program. Following a series of PLO attacks in 1982, Israel invaded Lebanon that year to destroy the bases from which the PLO launched attacks and missiles into northern Israel. In the first six days of fighting, the Israelis destroyed the military forces of the PLO in Lebanon and decisively defeated the Syrians. An Israeli government inquiry, the Kahan Commission, would later hold Begin and several Israeli generals as indirectly responsible for the Sabra and Shatila massacre and hold Defense Minister Ariel Sharon as bearing personal responsibility for the massacre. Sharon was forced to resign as Defense Minister. In 1985, 
Israel responded to a Palestinian terrorist attack in Cyprus by bombing the PLO headquarters in Tunisia. Israel withdrew from most of Lebanon in 1986, but maintained a borderland buffer zone in southern Lebanon until 2000, from where Israeli forces engaged in conflict with Hezbollah. The First Intifada, a Palestinian uprising against Israeli rule, broke out in 1987, with waves of uncoordinated demonstrations and violence occurring in the occupied West Bank and Gaza. Over the following six years, the Intifada became more organized and included economic and cultural measures aimed at disrupting the Israeli occupation. More than a thousand people were killed in the violence. During the 1991 Gulf War, the PLO supported Saddam Hussein and Iraqi Scud missile attacks against Israel. Despite public outrage, Israel heeded American calls to refrain from hitting back and did not participate in that war. In 1992, Yitzhak Rabin became prime minister following an election in which his party called for compromise with Israel's neighbors. The following year, Shimon Peres on behalf of Israel, and Mahmoud Abbas for the PLO, signed the Oslo Accords, which gave the Palestinian National Authority the right to govern parts of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The PLO also recognized Israel's right to exist and pledged an end to terrorism. In 1994, the Israel-Jordan Peace Treaty was signed, making Jordan the second Arab country to normalize relations with Israel. Arab public support for the Accords was damaged by the continuation of Israeli settlements and checkpoints and the deterioration of economic conditions. Israeli public support for the Accords waned as Israel was struck by Palestinian suicide attacks. In November 1995, Yitzhak Rabin was assassinated as he left a peace rally by Yigal Amir, a far-right Jew who opposed the Accords. Under the leadership of Benjamin Netanyahu at the end of the 1990s, Israel withdrew from Hebron, and signed the Y River Memorandum, giving greater control to the Palestinian National Authority. Ahud Barak, elected Prime Minister in 1999, began the new millennium by withdrawing forces from southern Lebanon, and conducting negotiations with Palestinian Authority Chairman Yasser Arafat, and U.S. President Bill Clinton at the 2000 Camp David Summit. During the summit, Barak offered a plan for the establishment of a Palestinian state. The proposed state included the entirety of the Gaza Strip and over 90% of the West Bank with Jerusalem as a shared capital. Each side blamed the other for the failure of the talks. After a controversial visit by Likud leader Ariel Sharon to the Temple Mount, the Second Intifada began. Some commentators contend that the uprising was pre-planned by Arafat, due to the collapse of peace talks. Sharon became Prime Minister in a 2001 special election. During his tenure, Sharon carried out his plan to unilaterally withdraw from the Gaza Strip and also spearheaded the construction of the Israeli West Bank barrier, ending the Intifada. By this time 1,100 Israelis had been killed, mostly in suicide bombings. The Palestinian fatalities, from 2000 to 2008, reached 4,791 killed by Israeli security forces, 44 killed by Israeli civilians, and 609 killed by Palestinians. In July 2006, a Hezbollah artillery assault on Israel's northern border communities and a cross border abduction of two Israeli soldiers precipitated the month long Second Lebanon War. On 6 September 2007, the Israeli Air Force destroyed a nuclear reactor in Syria. At the end of 2008, Israel entered another conflict as a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel collapsed. The 2008-09 Gaza war lasted three weeks and ended after Israel announced a unilateral ceasefire. Hamas announced its own ceasefire, with its own conditions of complete withdrawal and opening of border crossings. Despite neither the rocket launchings nor Israeli retaliatory strikes having completely stopped, the fragile ceasefire remained in order. In what Israel described as a response to more than a hundred Palestinian rocket attacks on southern Israeli cities, Israel began an operation in Gaza on 14 November 2012, lasting eight days. Israel started another operation in Gaza following an escalation of rocket attacks by Hamas in July 2014. 
In May 2021, another round of fighting took place in Gaza and Israel, lasting 11 days. In September 2010, Israel was invited to join the OECD. Israel has also signed free trade agreements with the European Union, the United States, the European Free Trade Association, Turkey, Mexico, Canada, Jordan, and Egypt, and in 2007, it became the first non-Latin American country to sign a free trade agreement with the Mercosur trade bloc. By the 2010s, the increasing regional cooperation between Israel and Arab League countries, with many of whom peace agreements, diplomatic relations and unofficial relations, have been established, the Israeli security situation shifted from the traditional Arab-Israeli hostility towards regional rivalry with Iran and its proxies. The Iran-Israel proxy conflict gradually emerged from the declared hostility of post-revolutionary Islamic Republic of Iran towards Israel since the 1979 revolution, into covert Iranian support of Hezbollah during the South Lebanon conflict and essentially developed into a proxy regional conflict from 2005. With increasing Iranian involvement in the Syrian civil war from 2011 the conflict shifted from proxy warfare into direct confrontation by early 2018. Chapter 3, Geography, and Environment Israel is located in the Levant area of the Fertile Crescent region. The country is at the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea, bounded by Lebanon to the north, Syria to the northeast, Jordan and the West Bank to the east, and Egypt and the Gaza Strip to the southwest. It lies between latitudes 29 degrees and 34 degrees north, and longitudes 34 degrees and 36 degrees east. The sovereign territory of Israel is approximately 20,770 square kilometers in area, of which 2% is water. However Israel is so narrow that the exclusive economic zone in the Mediterranean is double the land area of the country. The total area under Israeli law, including East Jerusalem and the Golan Heights, is 22,072 square kilometers, and the total area under Israeli control, including the military controlled and partially Palestinian governed territory of the West Bank, is 27,799 square kilometers. Despite its small size, Israel is home to a variety of geographic features, from the Negev Desert in the south to the inland fertile Jezreel Valley, mountain ranges of the Galilee, Carmel, and toward the Golan in the north. The Israeli coastal plain on the shores of the Mediterranean is home to most of the nation's population. East of the central highlands lies the Jordan Rift Valley, which forms a small part of the 6,500-kilometer Great Rift Valley. The Jordan River runs along the Jordan Rift Valley, from Mount Hermon through the Hula Valley, and the Sea of Galilee to the Dead Sea, the lowest point on the surface of the earth. Further south is the Arabah, ending with the Gulf of Eilat, part of the Red Sea. Unique to Israel and the Sinai Peninsula Mukchim, or Erosion Cirques. The largest Mukch in the world is Ramon Crater in the Negev, which measures 40 by 8 kilometers. A report on the environmental status of the Mediterranean Basin states that Israel has the largest number of plant species per square meter of all the countries in the basin. Israel contains four terrestrial ecoregions, eastern Mediterranean conifer sclerophyllous broadleaf forests, southern Anatolian montane conifer and deciduous forests, Arabian desert, and Mesopotamian shrub desert. It had a 2019 forest landscape integrity index mean score of 4. 14 tenths, ranking it 135th globally out of 172 countries. Chapter 3 Section 1 Tectonics and Seismicity the Jordan Rift Valley is the result of tectonic movements within the Dead Sea Transform Fault System. The DSF forms the transform boundary between the African Plate to the west and the Arabian Plate to the east. The Golan Heights and all of Jordan are part of the Arabian Plate, while the Galilee, West Bank, Coastal Plain, and Negev along with the Sinai Peninsula are on the African Plate. This tectonic disposition leads to a relatively high seismic activity in the region. The entire Jordan Valley segment is thought to have ruptured repeatedly, for instance during the last two major earthquakes along this structure in 749 and 1033. 
the deficit in slip that has built up since the 1033 event is sufficient to cause an earthquake of MW7.4. The most catastrophic known earthquakes occurred in 31 BCE, 363, 749, and 1033 CE, that is every CA. 400 years on average. Destructive earthquakes leading to serious loss of life strike about every 80 years. While stringent construction regulations are currently in place and recently built structures are earthquake safe, as of 2007 the majority of the buildings in Israel were older than these regulations and many public buildings as well as 50,000 residential buildings did not meet the new standards and were expected to collapse if exposed to a strong earthquake. Chapter 3 Section 2 Climate Temperatures in Israel vary widely, especially during the winter. Coastal areas, such as those of Tel Aviv and Haifa, have a typical Mediterranean climate with cool, rainy winters and long, hot summers. The area of Beersheba and the northern Negev have a semi-arid climate with hot summers, cool winters, and fewer rainy days than the Mediterranean climate. The southern Negev, and the Arava areas have a desert climate with very hot, dry summers, and mild winters with few days of rain. The highest temperature in the world outside Africa and North America as of 2021, 54 degrees Celsius, was recorded in 1942 at Tirat Kibbutz in the northern Jordan River Valley. At the other extreme, mountainous regions can be windy and cold, and areas at elevation of 750 meters or more will usually receive at least one snowfall each year. From May to September, rain in Israel is rare. With scarce water resources, Israel has developed various water-saving technologies, including drip irrigation. Israelis also take advantage of the considerable sunlight available for solar energy, making Israel the leading nation in solar energy use per capita, practically every house uses, solar panels for water heating. There are four different phytogeographic regions in Israel, due to the country's location between the temperate and tropical zones, bordering the Mediterranean Sea in the west and the desert in the east. For this reason, the flora and fauna of Israel are extremely diverse. There are 2,867 known species of plants found in Israel. Of these, at least, 253 species are introduced and non-native. There are 380 Israeli nature reserves. Chapter 4, Demographics As of 2022, Israel's population was an estimated 9,478,940, of whom 74.2% were recorded by the civil government as Jews. Arabs accounted for 20.9% of the population, while non-Arab Christians and people who have no religion listed in the civil registry made up 4.8%. Over the last decade, large numbers of migrant workers from Romania, Thailand, China, Africa, and South America have settled in Israel. Exact figures are unknown, as many of them are living in the country illegally, but estimates run from 166,000 to 203,000. By June 2012, approximately 60,000 African migrants had entered Israel. About 92% of Israelis live in urban areas. 90% of Palestinian Israelis reside in 139 densely populated towns and villages concentrated in the Galilee, Triangle and Negev regions, with the remaining 10% in mixed cities and neighborhoods. Data published by the OECD in 2016 estimated the average life expectancy of Israelis at 82.5 years, making it the sixth highest in the world. Israeli Arab life expectancy lags behind by three to four years, still highest among Arabs or Muslims in the world. Israel was established as a homeland for the Jewish people and is often referred to as a Jewish state. The country's law of return grants all Jews and those of Jewish ancestry the right to Israeli citizenship. Retention of Israel's population since 1948 is about even or greater when compared to other countries with mass immigration. Jewish emigration from Israel primarily to the United States and Canada, is described by demographers as modest, 
but is often cited by Israeli government ministries as a major threat to Israel's future. Three quarters of the population are Jews from a diversity of Jewish backgrounds. Approximately 75% of Israeli Jews are born in Israel, 16% are immigrants from Europe and the Americas, and 7% are immigrants from Asia and Africa. Jews from Europe and the former Soviet Union and their descendants born in Israel, including Ashkenazi Jews, constitute approximately 50% of Jewish Israelis. Jews who left or fled Arab and Muslim countries and their descendants, including both Mizrahi and Sephardi Jews, form most of the rest of the Jewish population. Jewish intermarriage rates run at over 35% and recent studies suggest that the percentage of Israelis descended from both Sephardi and Ashkenazi Jews increases by 0.5% every year, with over 25% of school children now originating from both communities. Around 4% of Israelis, ethnically defined as others, are Russian descendants of Jewish origin or family, who are not Jewish according to rabbinical law but were eligible for Israeli citizenship under the law of return. The total number of Israeli settlers beyond the Green Line is over 600,000. In 2016, 399,300 Israelis lived in West Bank settlements, including those that predated the establishment of the State of Israel and which were re-established after the Six-Day War, in cities such as Hebron and Gush Etzion Bloc. In addition to the West Bank settlements, there were more than 200,000 Jews living in East Jerusalem, and 22,000 in the Golan Heights. Approximately 7,800 Israelis lived in settlements in the Gaza Strip, known as Gush Katif, until they were evacuated by the government as part of its 2005 disengagement plan. Israeli Arabs comprise 21.1% of the population or 1,995,000 people. In a 2017 telephone poll, 40% of Arab citizens of Israel identified as Arab in Israel or Arab citizen of Israel, 15% identified as Palestinian, 8.9% as Palestinian in Israel or Palestinian citizen of Israel, and 8.7% as Arab, 60% of Israeli Arabs have a positive view of the state. According to Sami Smuer, the identity of 83.0% of the Arabs in 2019 has an Israeli component and 61.9% has a Palestinian component. However, when these two components were presented as competitors, 69.0% of the Arabs in 2019 chose exclusive or primary Palestinian identity, compared with 29.8% who chose exclusive or primary Israeli Arab identity. Chapter 4 Section 1 major urban areas. Israel has four major metropolitan areas, Gush Dan, Jerusalem Metropolitan Area, Haifa Metropolitan Area, and Beersheba Metropolitan Area. Israel's largest municipality, in population and area, is Jerusalem with 936,425 residents in an area of 125 square kilometers. Israeli government statistics on Jerusalem include the population and area of East Jerusalem, which is widely recognized as part of the Palestinian territories under Israeli occupation. Tel Aviv and Haifa rank as Israel's next most populous cities, with populations of 460,613 and 285,316, respectively. Israel has 16 cities with populations over 100,000. In all, there are 77 Israeli localities granted municipalities status by the Ministry of the Interior, four of which are in the West Bank. Two more cities are planned, Kasif, a planned city to be built in the Negev, and Harish, originally a small town, that is being built into a large city since 2015. Carat A This number includes East Jerusalem and West Bank areas which had a total population of 573,330 inhabitants in 2019. Israeli sovereignty over East Jerusalem is internationally unrecognized. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Language Israel has one official language, Hebrew. Arabic had been an official language of the State of Israel, in 2018 it was downgraded to having a special status in the state with its use by state institutions to be set in law. Hebrew is the primary language of the state, 
and is spoken every day by the majority of the population. Arabic is spoken by the Arab minority, with Hebrew taught in Arab schools. As a country of immigrants, many languages can be heard on the streets. Due to mass immigration from the former Soviet Union and Ethiopia, Russian and Amharic are widely spoken. More than one million Russian-speaking immigrants arrived in Israel from the post-Soviet states between 1990 and 2004. French is spoken by around 700,000 Israelis, mostly originating from France and North Africa. English was an official language during the Mandate period, it lost this status after the establishment of Israel, but retains a role comparable to that of an official language, as may be seen in road signs and official documents. Many Israelis communicate reasonably well in English, as many television programs are broadcast in English with subtitles and the language is taught from the early grades in elementary school. In addition, Israeli universities offer courses in the English language on various subjects. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Religion Israel comprises a major part of the Holy Land, a region of significant importance to all Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Druze and Baha'i faith. The religious affiliation of Israeli Jews varies widely, a social survey from 2016 made by Pew Research indicates that 49% self-identify as Hilorni, 29% as Masorti, 13% as Dotti and 9% as Haredi. Haredi Jews are expected to represent more than 20% of Israel's Jewish population by 2028. Muslims constitute Israel's largest religious minority, making up about 17.6% of the population. About 2% of the population is Christian and 1.6% is Druze. The Christian population is composed primarily of Arab Christians and Eremian Christians, but also includes post Soviet immigrants the foreign laborers of multinational origins, and followers of Messianic Judaism, considered by most Christians and Jews to be a form of Christianity. Members of many other religious groups, including Buddhists and Hindus, maintain a presence in Israel, albeit in small numbers. Out of more than one million immigrants from the former Soviet Union, about 300,000 are considered not Jewish by the chief rabbinate of Israel. The city of Jerusalem is of special importance to Jews, Muslims, and Christians, as it is the home of sites that are pivotal to their religious beliefs, such as the old city that incorporates the Western Wall and the Temple Mount, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Other locations of religious importance in Israel are Nazareth, Tiberias and Safed, the White Mosque in Ramla, and the Church of St. George in Lod. A number of other religious landmarks are located in the West Bank, among them Joseph's tomb in Nablus, the birthplace of Jesus and Rachel's tomb in Bethlehem, and the Cave of the Patriarchs in Hebron. The administrative center of the Baha'i Faith and the Shrine of the Bab are located at the Baha'i World Center in Haifa, the leader of the faith is buried in Acre. A few kilometers south of the Baha'i World Center is Mahmoud Mosque affiliated with the reformist Ahmadiyya movement. Kababa, Haifa's mixed neighborhood of Jews and Ahmadi Arabs is one of a few of its kind in the country, others being Jaffa, Acre, other Haifa neighborhoods, Harish and Upper Nazareth. Chapter 4 Section 4, Education Education is highly valued in the Israeli culture and was viewed as a fundamental block of ancient Israelites. Jewish communities in the Levant were the first to introduce compulsory education for which the organized community, not less than the parents was responsible. Many international business leaders, such as Microsoft founder Bill Gates have praised Israel for its high quality of education in helping spur Israel's economic development and technological boom. In 2015, the country ranked third among OECD members for the percentage of 25 to 64 year olds that have attained tertiary education with 49% compared with the OECD average of 35%. In 2012, the country ranked third in the world in the number of academic degrees per capita. Israel has a school life expectancy of 16 years and a literacy rate of 97.8%. The state education law, passed in 1953, established five types of schools, 
state secular, state religious, ultra-Orthodox, communal settlement schools, and Arab schools. The public secular is the largest school group, and is attended by the majority of Jewish and non-Arab pupils in Israel. Most Arabs send their children to schools where Arabic is the language of instruction. Education is compulsory in Israel for children between the ages of 3 and 18. Schooling is divided into three tiers, primary school, middle school, and high school, culminating with Bagrat matriculation exams. Proficiency in core subjects such as mathematics, the Hebrew language, Hebrew and general literature, the English language, history, biblical scripture and civics is necessary to receive a Bagrat certificate. Israel's Jewish population maintains a relatively high level of educational attainment, where just under half of all Israeli Jews hold post-secondary degrees. This figure has remained stable in their already high levels of educational attainment, over recent generations. Israeli Jews have average of 11.6 years of schooling making them one of the most highly educated of all major religious groups in the world. In Arab, Christian and Druze schools, the exam on biblical studies is replaced by an exam on Muslim, Christian or Druze heritage. Mariv described the Christian Arab sectors as the most successful in education system, since Christians fared the best in terms of education in comparison to any other religion in Israel. Israeli children from Russian-speaking families have a higher Bagrat pass rate at high school level. Amongst immigrant children born in the former Soviet Union, the Bagrat pass rate is higher amongst those families from European FSU states at 62.6% and lower amongst those from Central Asian and Caucasian FSU states. In 2014, 61.5% of all Israeli 12th graders earned a matriculation certificate. Israel has a tradition of higher education where its quality university education has been largely responsible in, is spurring the nation's modern economic development. Israel has nine public universities that are subsidized by the state and 49 private colleges. The Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel's second oldest university after the Technion, houses the National Library of Israel, the world's largest repository of Judaica, and Hebraica. The Technion and the Hebrew University consistently ranked among world's 100 top universities by the prestigious Awa Academic Ranking. Other major universities in the country include the Weizmann Institute of Science, Tel Aviv University, Ben Goyon University of the Negev, Bar Ilan University, the University of Haifa, and the Open University of Israel. Ariel University, in the West Bank, is the newest university institution, upgraded from college status, and the first in over 30 years. Chapter 5, Government and Politics Israel is a parliamentary democracy with universal suffrage. A member of parliament supported by a parliamentary majority becomes the prime minister, usually this is the chair of the largest party. The Prime Minister is the head of government and head of the cabinet. Israel is governed by a 120 member parliament, known as the Knesset. Membership of the Knesset is based on proportional representation of political parties, with a 3.25% electoral threshold, which in practice has resulted in coalition governments. Residents of Israeli settlements in the West Bank are eligible to vote and after the 2015 election, 10 of the 120 MKs were settlers. Parliamentary elections are scheduled every four years, but unstable coalitions or a no-confidence vote by the Knesset can dissolve a government earlier. The basic laws of Israel function as an uncodified constitution. In 2003, the Knesset began to draft an official constitution based on these laws. The President of Israel is head of state, with limited and largely ceremonial duties. Israel has no official religion, but the definition of the state as Jewish and democratic creates a strong connection with Judaism, as well as a conflict between state law and religious law. Interaction between the political parties keeps the balance between state and religion largely as it existed during the British Mandate. On 19 July 2018, the Israeli parliament passed a basic law that characterizes the state of Israel as principally a nation state of the Jewish people, 
and Hebrew as its official language. The bill ascribes special status to the Arabic language. The same bill gives Jews a unique right to national self-determination, and views the developing of Jewish settlement in the country as a national interest, empowering the government to take steps to encourage, advance and implement this interest. Chapter 5 Section 1 Legal System Israel has a three-tier court system. At the lowest level are magistrate courts, situated in most cities across the country. Above them are district courts, serving as both appellate courts and courts of first instance, they are situated in five of Israel's six districts. The third and highest tier is the Supreme Court, located in Jerusalem, it serves a dual role as the highest court of appeals and the high court of justice. In the latter role, the Supreme Court rules as a court of first instance, allowing individuals, both citizens and non-citizens, to petition against the decisions of state authorities. Although Israel supports the goals of the International Criminal Court, it has not ratified the Rome Statute, citing concerns about the ability of the court to remain free from political impartiality. Israel's legal system combines three legal traditions, English common law, civil law, and Jewish law. It is based on the principle of stare decisis, and is an adversarial system, where the parties in the suit bring evidence before the court. Court cases are decided by professional judges with no role for juries. Marriage and divorce are under the jurisdiction of the religious courts, Jewish, Muslim, Druze and Christian. The election of judges is carried out by a committee of two Kesset members, three Supreme Court justices, two Israeli bar members and two ministers. The committee's members of the Kesset are secretly elected by the Kesset, and one of them is traditionally a member of the opposition, the committee's Supreme Court justices are chosen by tradition from all Supreme Court justices by seniority, the Israeli bar members are elected by the bar, and the second minister is appointed by the Israeli cabinet. The current justice minister and committee's chairwoman, is Eilat Shaked. Administration of Israel's courts is carried by the administration of courts, situated in Jerusalem. Both general and labor courts are paperless courts, the storage of court files, as well as court decisions, are conducted electronically. Israel's basic law, human dignity and liberty seeks to defend human rights and liberties in Israel. As a result of enclave law, large portions of Israeli civil law are applied to Israeli settlements and Israeli residents in the occupied territories. Chapter 5 Section 2 Administrative Divisions the State of Israel is divided into six main administrative districts, known as Meozo, Center, Haifa, Jerusalem, North, South, and Tel Aviv districts, as well as the Judea and Samaria area in the West Bank. All of the Judea and Samaria area, and parts of the Jerusalem and Northern districts are not recognized internationally as part of Israel. Districts are further divided into 15 subdistricts known as Nafot which are themselves partitioned into 50 natural regions. Karat A including over 200,000 Jews and 300,000 Arabs in East Jerusalem. Karat B Israeli citizens only. Chapter 5 Section 3, Israeli Occupied Territories In 1967, as a result of the Six-Day War, Israel captured and occupied the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, the Gaza Strip and the Golan Heights. Israel also captured the Sinai Peninsula, but returned it to Egypt as part of the 1979 Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. Between 1982 and 2000, Israel occupied part of southern Lebanon, in what was known as the Security Belt. Since Israel's capture of these territories, Israeli settlements and military installations have been built within each of them, except Lebanon. The Golan Heights and East Jerusalem have been fully incorporated into Israel under Israeli law, but not under international law. Israel has applied civilian law to both areas and granted their inhabitants permanent residency status and the ability to apply for citizenship. The UN Security Council has declared the annexation of the Golan Heights and East Jerusalem to be null and void and continues to view the territories as occupied. The status of East Jerusalem in any future peace settlement, 
has at times been a difficult issue in negotiations between Israeli governments and representatives of the Palestinians, as Israel views it as its sovereign territory, as well as part of its capital. The West Bank excluding East Jerusalem is known in Israeli law as the Judea and Samaria area, the almost 400,000 Israeli settlers residing in the area are considered part of Israel's population, have Keset representation, a large part of Israel's civil and criminal laws applied to them, and their output is considered part of Israel's economy. The land itself is not considered part of Israel under Israeli law, as Israel has consciously refrained from annexing the territory, without ever relinquishing its legal claim to the land or defining a border with the area. There is no border between Israel proper and the West Bank for Israeli vehicles. Israeli political opposition to annexation is primarily due to the perceived demographic threat of incorporating the West Bank's Palestinian population into Israel. Outside of the Israeli settlements, the West Bank remains under direct Israeli military rule, and Palestinians in the area cannot become Israeli citizens. The international community maintains that Israel does not have sovereignty in the West Bank, and considers Israel's control of the area to be the longest military occupation in modern history. The West Bank was occupied and annexed by Jordan in 1950, following the Arab rejection of the UN decision to create two states in Palestine. Only Britain recognized this annexation and Jordan has since ceded its claim to the territory to the PLO. The population are mainly Palestinians, including refugees of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. From their occupation in 1967 until 1993, the Palestinians living in these territories were under Israeli military administration. Since the Israel PLO letters of recognition, most of the Palestinian population and cities have been under the internal jurisdiction of the Palestinian Authority, and only partial Israeli military control, although Israel has on several occasions redeployed its troops and reinstated full military administration during periods of unrest. In response to increasing attacks during the Second Intifada, the Israeli government started to construct the Israeli West Bank barrier. When completed, approximately 13% of the barrier will be constructed on the Green Line or in Israel with 87% inside the West Bank. The Gaza Strip is considered to be a foreign territory under Israeli law, however, since Israel operates a land, air, and sea blockade of the Gaza Strip, together with Egypt, the international community considers Israel to be the occupying power. The Gaza Strip was occupied by Egypt from 1948 to 1967 and then by Israel after 1967. In 2005, as part of Israel's unilateral disengagement plan, Israel removed all of its settlers and forces from the territory, however, it continues to maintain control of its airspace and waters. The international community, including numerous international humanitarian organizations and various bodies of the UN, consider Gaza to remain occupied. Following the 2007 Battle of Gaza, when Hamas assumed power in the Gaza Strip, Israel tightened its control of the Gaza crossings along its border, as well as by sea and air, and prevented persons from entering and exiting the area except for isolated cases it deemed humanitarian. Gaza has a border with Egypt, and an agreement between Israel, the European Union, and the PA governed how border crossing would take place. The application of democracy to its Palestinian citizens, and the selective application of Israeli democracy in the Israeli-controlled Palestinian territories, has been criticized. The International Court of Justice, principal judicial organ of the UN, asserted, in its 2004 advisory opinion on the legality of the construction of the Israeli West Bank barrier, that the lands captured by Israel in the Six-Day War, including East Jerusalem, are occupied territory. Most negotiations relating to the territories have been on the basis of UN Security Council Resolution 242, which emphasizes the inadmissibility of the acquisition of territory by war, and calls on Israel to withdraw from occupied territories in return for normalization of relations with Arab states, a principle known as land for peace. According to some observers, Israel has engaged in systematic and widespread violations of human rights in the occupied territories, including the occupation itself and war crimes against civilians. 
The allegations include violations of international humanitarian law by the UN Human Rights Council, with local residents having limited ability to hold governing authorities accountable for such abuses by the US State Department, mass arbitrary arrests, torture, unlawful killings, systemic abuses and impunity by Amnesty International and others and a denial of the right to Palestinian self-determination. In response to such allegations, Prime Minister Netanyahu, has defended the country's security forces for protecting the innocent from terrorists and expressed contempt for what he describes as a lack of concern about the human rights violations committed by criminal killers. Some observers, such as Israeli officials, scholars, United States Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley and UN Secretary Generals Ban Ki-moon and Kofi Annan, also assert that the UN is disproportionately concerned with Israeli misconduct. The international community widely regards Israeli settlements in the occupied territories illegal under international law. United Nations Security Council Resolution 2334, passed on 23 December 2016 in a 14-0 vote by members of the UN Security Council with the United States abstaining. The resolution states that Israel's settlement activity constitutes a flagrant violation of international law, has no legal validity and demands that Israel stop such activity and fulfill its obligations as an occupying power under the Fourth Geneva Convention. Israel's treatment of the Palestinians within the occupied territories has drawn accusations that it is guilty of the crime of apartheid by human rights groups such as Psalm, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch with the criticism extending to its treatment of Palestinians within Israel as well. Amnesty's report was rejected by Israel and several other countries, including the United States, United Kingdom, and Germany, while it was welcomed by Palestinians and other states and organizations such as the Arab League. Chapter 5 Section 4 – Foreign Relations Israel maintains diplomatic relations with 164 member states of the United Nations, as well as with the Holy See, Kosovo, the Cook Islands and Niue. It has 107 diplomatic missions around the world, countries with whom may have no diplomatic relations include most Muslim countries. Only a few nations in the Arab League have normalized relations with Israel. Egypt and Jordan signed peace treaties in 1979 and 1994, respectively. In late 2020, Israel normalized relations with four more Arab countries, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain in September, Sudan in October, and Morocco in December. Despite the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt, Israel is still widely considered an enemy country among Egyptians. Iran had diplomatic relations with Israel under the Pahlavi dynasty but withdrew its recognition of Israel during the Islamic Revolution. Israeli citizens may not visit Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen without permission from the Ministry of the Interior. As a result of the 2008 09 Gaza War, Mauritania, Qatar, Bolivia, and Venezuela suspended political and economic ties with Israel though Bolivia renewed ties in 2019. China maintains good ties with both Israel and the Arab world. The United States and the Soviet Union were the first two countries to recognize the state of Israel, having declared recognition roughly simultaneously. Diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union were broken in 1967, following the Six-Day War, and renewed in October 1991. The United States regards Israel as its most reliable partner in the Middle East, based on common democratic values, religious affinities, and security interests. The United States has provided $68 billion in military assistance and $32 billion in grants to Israel since 1967, under the Foreign Assistance Act, more than any other country for that period until 2003. The United Kingdom is seen as having a natural relationship with Israel on account of the mandate for Palestine. Relations between the two countries were also made stronger by former Prime Minister Tony Blair's efforts for a two-state resolution. By 2007, Germany had paid 25 billion euros in reparations to the Israeli state and individual Israeli Holocaust survivors. Israel is included in the European Union's European Neighborhood Policy, which aims at bringing the EU and its neighbors closer. 
Although Turkey and Israel did not establish full diplomatic relations until 1991, Turkey has cooperated with the Jewish state since its recognition of Israel in 1949. Turkey's ties to other Muslim-majority nations in the region have at times resulted in pressure from Arab and Muslim states to temper its relationship with Israel. Relations between Turkey and Israel took a downturn after the 2000 and 809 Gaza War and Israel's raid of the Gaza flotilla. Relations between Greece and Israel have improved since 1995 due to the decline of Israeli-Turkish relations. The two countries have a defense cooperation agreement and in 2010, the Israeli Air Force hosted Greece's Hellenic Air Force in a joint exercise at the Uta base. The joint Cyprus-Israel oil and gas explorations centered on the Leviathan gas field are an important factor for Greece, given its strong links with Cyprus. Cooperation in the world's longest subsea electric power cable, the Euro-Asia Interconnector, has strengthened relations between Cyprus and Israel. Azerbaijan is one of the few majority Muslim countries to develop bilateral strategic and economic relations with Israel. Azerbaijan supplies Israel with a substantial amount of its oil needs, and Israel has helped modernize the Azerbaijani armed forces. India established full diplomatic ties with Israel in 1992 and has fostered a strong military, technological and cultural partnership with the country since then. According to an international opinion survey conducted in 2009 on behalf of the Israel Ministry of Foreign Affairs, India is the most pro-Israel country in the world. India is the largest customer of the Israeli military equipment and Israel is the second largest military partner of India after Russia. Ethiopia is Israel's main ally in Africa due to common political, religious and security interests. Israel provides expertise to Ethiopia on irrigation projects and thousands of Ethiopian Jews live in Israel. Israel has a history of providing emergency aid and humanitarian response teams to disasters across the world. In 1955 Israel began its foreign aid program in Burma. The program's focus subsequently shifted to Africa. Israel's humanitarian efforts officially began in 1957, with the establishment of Mashav, the Israel's Agency for International Development Cooperation. In this early period, Whilst Israel's aid represented only a small percentage of total aid to Africa, its program was effective in creating goodwill throughout the continent, however, following the 1967 war relations soured. Israel's foreign aid program subsequently shifted its focus to Latin America. Since the late 1970s Israel's foreign aid has gradually decreased, although in recent years Israel has tried to re-establish its aid to Africa. There are additional Israeli humanitarian and emergency response groups that work with the Israel government, including Isra Aid, a joint program run by 14 Israeli organizations and North American Jewish groups, Zaka, the Fast Israeli Rescue and Search Team, Israeli Flying Aid, Save a Child's Heart and Latet. Between 1985 and 2015, Israel sent 24 delegations of IDF Search and Rescue Unit, the Home Front Command, to 22 countries. Currently Israeli foreign aid ranks low among OECD nations, spending less than 0.1% of its GNI on development assistance. The UN has set a target of 0.7%. In 2015 six nations reached the UN target. The country ranked 38th in the 2018 World Giving Index. Chapter 5 Section 5 Military the Israel Defense Forces is the sole military wing of the Israeli Security Forces, and is headed by its Chief of General Staff, the Ramatkal, subordinate to the Cabinet. The IDF consists of the Army, Air Force and Navy. It was founded during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War by consolidating paramilitary organizations, chiefly the Haganah, that preceded the establishment of the state. The IDF also draws upon the resources of the Military Intelligence Directorate, which works with Mossad and Shabak. The Israel Defense Forces have been involved in several major wars and border conflicts in its short history, making it one of the most battle-trained armed forces in the world. Most Israelis are drafted into the military at the age of 18. 
men serve two years and eight months and women two years. Following mandatory service, Israeli men join the reserve forces and usually do up to several weeks of reserve duty every year until their forties. Most women are exempt from reserve duty. Arab citizens of Israel and those engaged in full-time religious studies are exempt from military service, although the exemption of yeshiva students has been a source of contention in Israeli society for many years. An alternative for those who receive exemptions on various grounds is Sherat Lumi, or national service, which involves a program of service in hospitals, schools and other social welfare frameworks. As a result of its conscription program, the IDF maintains approximately 176,500 active troops and an additional 465,000 reservists, giving Israel one of the world's highest percentage of citizens with military training. The nation's military relies heavily on high-tech weapons systems designed and manufactured in Israel as well as some foreign imports. The Arrow missile is one of the world's few operational anti-ballistic missile systems. The Python air-to-air missile series is often considered one of the most crucial weapons in its military history. Israel's spike missile is one of the most widely exported anti-tank guided missiles in the world. Israel's Iron Dome anti-missile air defense system gained worldwide acclaim after intercepting hundreds of Qassam, 122mm Grad and Fudger 5 artillery rockets fired by Palestinian militants from the Gaza Strip. Since the Yom Kippur War, Israel has developed a network of reconnaissance satellites. The success of the OFEC program has made Israel one of seven countries capable of launching such satellites. Israel is widely believed to possess nuclear weapons and per a 1993 report, chemical and biological weapons of mass destruction. Israel has not signed the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons and maintains a policy of deliberate ambiguity toward its nuclear capabilities. The Israeli Navy's Dolphin submarines are believed to be armed with nuclear Popeye turbo missiles, offering second strike capability. Since the Gulf War in 1991, when Israel was attacked by Iraqi Scud missiles, all homes in Israel are required to have a reinforced security room, Merkav Muggen, impermeable to chemical and biological substances. Since Israel's establishment, military expenditure constituted a significant portion of the country's gross domestic product, with peak of 30.3% of GDP spent on defense in 1975. In 2016, Israel ranked sixth in the world by defense spending as a percentage of GDP, with 5.7%, and 15th by total military expenditure, with $18 billion. Since 1974, the United States has been a particularly notable contributor of military aid to Israel. Under a Memorandum of Understanding signed in 2016, the U.S. is expected to provide the country with $3.8 billion per year, or around 20% of Israel's defense budget, from 2018 to 2028. Israel ranked fifth globally for arms exports in 2017. The majority of Israel's arms exports are unreported for security reasons. Israel is consistently rated low in the Global Peace Index, ranking 144th out of 163 nations for peacefulness in 2017. Chapter 6 Economy Israel is considered the most advanced country in Western Asia, and the Middle East in economic and industrial development. Israel's quality university education and the establishment of a highly motivated and educated populace is largely responsible for spurring the country's high technology boom and rapid economic development. In 2010, it joined the OECD. The country is ranked 20th in the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Report and 35th on the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index. Israel was also ranked fifth in the world by share of people in high-skilled employment. Israeli economic data covers the economic territory of Israel, including the Golan Heights, East Jerusalem and Israeli settlements in the West Bank. Despite limited natural resources, intensive development of the agricultural and industrial sectors over the past decades has made Israel largely self-sufficient in food production, apart from grains and beef. Imports to Israel, totaling $96.5 billion in 2020, 
include raw materials, military equipment, investment goods, rough diamonds, fuels, grain, and consumer goods. Leading exports include machinery and equipment, software, cut diamonds, agricultural products, chemicals, and textiles and apparel. In 2020, Israeli exports reached $114 billion. The Bank of Israel holds $173 billion of foreign exchange reserves. Since the 1970s, Israel has received military aid from the United States, as well as economic assistance in the form of loan guarantees, which now account for roughly half of Israel's external debt. Israel has one of the lowest external debts in the developed world, and is a lender in terms of net external debt, which in 2015 stood at a surplus of $69 billion. Israel has the second largest number of startup companies in the world after the United States, and the third largest number of Nasdaq listed companies after the US and China. Intel and Microsoft built their first overseas research and development facilities in Israel, and other high tech multinational corporations, such as IBM, Google, Apple, Hewlett Packard, Cisco Systems, Facebook and Motorola have opened research and development centers in the country. In 2007, American investor Warren Buffett's holding company Berkshire Hathaway bought an Israeli company, Iska, its first acquisition outside the United States, for $4 billion. Days of working time in Israel are Sunday through Thursday, or Friday. In observance of Shabbat, in places where Friday is a work day and the majority of population is Jewish, Friday is a short day, usually lasting until 1400 hours in the winter, or 1600 hours in the summer. Several proposals have been raised to adjust the work week with the majority of the world, and make Sunday a non-working day, while extending working time of other days or replacing Friday with Sunday as a work day. Chapter 6, Section 1 Science and Technology Israel's development of cutting-edge technologies in software, communications and the life sciences have evoked comparisons with Silicon Valley. Israel is first in the world in expenditure on research and development as a percentage of GDP. It is ranked 13 RD in the Global Innovation Index in 2020, down from 10th in 2019 and 5th in the 2019 Bloomberg Innovation Index. Israel has 140 scientists, technicians, and engineers per 10,000 employees, the highest number in the world, for comparison the US has 85 per 100,000. Israel has produced six Nobel Prize winning scientists since 2004 and has been frequently ranked as one of the countries with the highest ratios of scientific papers per capita in the world. Israel has led the world in stem cell research papers per capita since 2000. Israeli universities are ranked among the top 50 world universities in computer science, mathematics and chemistry. In 2012, Israel was ranked ninth in the world by the Futron's Space Competitiveness Index. The Israel Space Agency coordinates all Israeli space research programs with scientific and commercial goals, and have indigenously designed and built at least 13 commercial, research and spy satellites. Some of Israel's satellites are ranked among the world's most advanced space systems. Shavit is a space launch vehicle produced by Israel to launch small satellites into low Earth orbit. It was first launched in 1988, making Israel the eighth nation to have a space launch capability. In 2003, Ilan Ramon became Israel's first astronaut, serving as payload specialist of SDS-107, the fatal mission of the space shuttle Columbia. The ongoing shortage of water in the country has spurred innovation in water conservation techniques, and a substantial agricultural modernization, drip irrigation, was invented in Israel. Israel is also at the technological forefront of desalination and water recycling. The Sork desalination plant, is the largest seawater reverse osmosis desalination facility in the world. By 2014, Israel's desalination programs provided roughly 35% of Israel's drinking water and it is expected to supply 40% by 2015 and 70% by 2050. As of 2015, more than 50% of the water for Israeli households, agriculture and industry is artificially produced. 
The country hosts an annual Water Technology and Environmental Control Exhibition and Conference that attracts thousands of people from across the world. In 2011, Israel's water technology industry was worth around $2 billion a year with annual exports of products and services in the tens of millions of dollars. As a result of innovations in reverse osmosis technology, Israel is set to become a net exporter of water in the coming years. Israel has embraced solar energy, its engineers are on the cutting edge of solar energy technology, and its solar companies work on projects around the world. Over 90% of Israeli homes use solar energy for hot water, the highest per capita in the world. According to government figures, the country saves 8% of its electricity consumption per year because of its solar energy use in heating. The high annual incident solar irradiance at its geographic latitude creates ideal conditions for what is an internationally renowned solar research and development industry in the Negev Desert. Israel had a modern electric car infrastructure involving a countrywide network of charging stations to facilitate the charging and exchange of car batteries. It was thought that this would have lowered Israel's oil dependency and lowered the fuel costs of hundreds of Israel's motorists that use cars powered only by electric batteries. The Israeli model was being studied by several countries and being implemented in Denmark and Australia. However, Israel's trailblazing electric car company Better Place shut down in 2013. Chapter 6, Section 2, Transportation Israel has 19,224 kilometers of paved roads, and 3 million motor vehicles. The number of motor vehicles per 1,000 persons is 365, relatively low with respect to developed countries. Israel has 5,715 buses on scheduled routes, operated by several carriers, the largest and oldest of which is EGD, serving most of the country. Railways stretch across 1,277 kilometers and are operated solely by government-owned Israel Railways. Following major investments beginning in the early to mid-1990s, the number of train passengers per year has grown from 2.5 million in 1990, to 53 million in 2015, railways are also transporting 7.5 million tons of cargo, per year. Israel is served by two international airports, Ben Goion Airport, the country's main hub for international air travel near Tel Aviv, and Ramon Airport, which serves the southernmost port city of Eilat. There are several small domestic airports as well. Ben Goion, Israel's largest airport, handled over 15 million passengers in 2015. On the Mediterranean coast, the port of Haifa is the country's oldest and largest port, while Ashdod Port is one of the few deep water ports in the world built on the open sea. In addition to these, the smaller port of Eilat is situated on the Red Sea, and is used mainly for trading with Far East countries. Chapter 6, Section 3, Tourism Tourism? especially religious tourism, is an important industry in Israel, with the country's temperate climate, beaches, archaeological, other historical and biblical sites, and unique geography also drawing tourists. Israel's security problems have taken their toll on the industry, but the number of incoming tourists is on the rebound. In 2017, a record of 3.6 million tourists visited Israel, yielding a 25% growth since 2016 and contributed 20 billion new Israeli shekels to the Israeli economy. Chapter 6, Section 4, Energy Israel began producing natural gas from its own offshore gas fields in 2004. Between 2005 and 2012, Israel had imported gas from Egypt via the al Arish Ashkelon pipeline, which was terminated due to Egyptian crisis of 2011-14. In 2009, a natural gas reserve, Tamar, was found near the coast of Israel. A second natural gas reserve, Leviathan, was discovered in 2010. The natural gas reserves in these two fields could make Israel energy secure for more than 50 years. In 2013, Israel began commercial production of natural gas from the Tamar field. As of 2014, Israel produced over 7.5 billion cubic meters of natural gas a year. 
Israel had 199 billion cubic meters of proven reserves of natural gas as of the start of 2016. Ketora Sun is Israel's first commercial solar field. Built in early 2011 by the Arava Power Company on Kibbutz Ketora, Ketora Sun covers 20 acres and is expected to produce green energy amounting to 4.95 megawatts. The field consists of 18,500 photovoltaic panels made by SunTech, which will produce about 9 gigawatt hours of electricity per year. In the next 20 years, the field will spare the production of some 125,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. The field was inaugurated on the 15th of June 2011. On the 22nd of May 2012, Arava Power Company announced that it had reached financial close on an additional 58.5 megawatts for eight projects to be built in the Arava and the Negev, valued at 780 million new Israeli shekels or approximately 204 million dollars. Chapter 6, Section 5: Real Estate. Housing prices in Israel are listed in the top third, with an average of 150 salaries required to buy an apartment. As of 2022, there are about 2.7 million properties in Israel, with an annual increase of more than 50,000. However, the demand for housing exceeds supply, with a shortage of about 200,000 apartments as of 2021, and thus rising house prices. As a result, by 2021 housing prices rose by 5.6%. High prices do not stop Israelis from buying properties. In 2021, Israelis took a record of 116.1 billion new Israeli shekels in mortgages, an increase of 50% from 2020. Chapter 7, Culture Israel's diverse culture stems from the diversity of its population. Jews from diaspora communities around the world brought their cultural and religious traditions back with them, creating a melting pot of Jewish customs and beliefs. Arab influences are present in many cultural spheres, such as architecture, music, and cuisine. Israel is the only country in the world where life revolves around the Hebrew calendar. Work and school holidays are determined by the Jewish holidays, and the official day of rest is Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath. Chapter 7 Section 1, Literature Israeli literature is primarily poetry and prose written in Hebrew, as part of the renaissance of Hebrew as a spoken language since the mid-19th century, although a small body of literature is published in other languages, such as English. By law, two copies of all printed matter published in Israel must be deposited in the National Library of Israel at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. In 2001, the law was amended to include audio and video recordings, and other non-print media. In 2016, 89% of the 7,300 books transferred to the library, were in Hebrew. In 1966, Shemuel Yosef had known shared the Nobel Prize in Literature with German-Jewish author Nelly Sachs. Leading Israeli poets have been Yehuda Amichai, Nathan Alterman, Leah Goldberg, and Rachel Bluffstein. Internationally famous contemporary Israeli novelists include Amos Oz, Etka Kerat, and David Grossman. The Israeli Arab satirist Syed Koshua is also internationally known. Israel has also been the home of Emil Habibi, whose novel The Secret Life of Said, The Pess Optimist, and other writings, won him the Israel Prize for Arabic Literature. Chapter 7 Section 2 Music and Dance Israeli music contains musical influences from all over the world, Mizrahi and Sephardic music, Hasidic melodies, Greek music, jazz, and pop rock are all part of the music scene. Among Israel's world-renowned orchestras is the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra, which has been in operation for over 70 years, and today performs more than 200 concerts each year. Itzhak Perlman, Pinchas Zuckerman and Ofra Haza are among the internationally acclaimed musicians born in Israel. Israel has participated in the Eurovision Song Contest nearly every year since 1973, winning the competition four times and hosting it twice. Eilat has hosted its own international music festival, the Red Sea Jazz Festival, every summer since 1987. The nation's canonical folk songs, 
known as Songs of the Land of Israel, deal with the experiences of the pioneers in building the Jewish homeland. Chapter 7 Section 3, Cinema and Theatre Ten Israeli films have been final nominees for Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards, since the establishment of Israel. The 2009 movie Ojumi, was the third consecutive nomination of an Israeli film. Palestinian Israeli filmmakers have made a number of films dealing with the Arab-Israeli conflict and the status of Palestinians within Israel, such as Mohammed Bakri's 2002 film Jenin, Jenin, and the Syrian Bride. Continuing the strong theatrical traditions of the Yiddish theatre in Eastern Europe, Israel maintains a vibrant theatre scene. Founded in 1918, Habima Theatre in Tel Aviv is Israel's oldest repertory theatre company and national theatre. Chapter 7 Section 4, Media The 2017 Freedom of the Press Annual Report by Freedom House ranked Israel as the Middle East and North Africa's most free country, and 64th globally. In the 2017 Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders, Israel was placed 91st of 180 countries, first in the Middle East and North Africa region. Chapter 7 Section 5, Museums The Israel Museum in Jerusalem is one of Israel's most important cultural institutions and houses the Dead Sea Scrolls, along with an extensive collection of Judaica, and European art. Israel's National Holocaust Museum, Yad Vashem, is the world's central archive of Holocaust-related information. Beit Hatfutzot, on the campus of Tel Aviv University, is an interactive museum devoted to the history of Jewish communities around the world. Apart from the major museums in large cities, there are high-quality art spaces in many towns and kibbutzim. Mishkan Lo Manat in Kibbutz Ein Herod Meohad is the largest art museum, in the north of the country. Israel has the highest number of museums per capita in the world. Several Israeli museums are devoted to Islamic culture, including the Rockefeller Museum, and the L.A. Maya Institute for Islamic Art, both in Jerusalem. The Rockefeller specializes in archaeological remains from the Ottoman and other periods of Middle East history. It is also the home of the first hominid fossil skull found in Western Asia, called Galilee Man. A cast of the skull is on display at the Israel Museum. Chapter 7 Section 6, Cuisine Israeli cuisine includes local dishes as well as Jewish cuisine brought to the country by immigrants from the diaspora. Since the establishment of the state in 1948, and particularly since the late 1970s, an Israeli fusion cuisine has developed. Israeli cuisine has adopted, and continues to adapt, elements of the Mizrahi, Sephardi, and Ashkenazi styles of cooking. It incorporates many foods traditionally eaten in the Levantine, Arab, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean cuisines, such as falafel, hummus, shikshuka, couscous, and za'atar. Schnitzel, pizza, hamburgers, French fries, rice and salad are also common in Israel. Roughly half of the Israeli Jewish population attests to keeping kosher at home. Kosher restaurants, though rare in the 1960s, make up around a quarter of the total as of 2015, perhaps reflecting the largely secular values of those who dine out. Hotel restaurants are much more likely to serve kosher food. The non-kosher retail market was traditionally sparse, but grew rapidly and considerably following the influx of immigrants from the post-Soviet states during the 1990s. Together with non-kosher fish, rabbits and ostriches, pork, often called white meat in Israel, is produced and consumed, though it is forbidden by both Judaism and Islam. Chapter 7 Section 7, Sports The most popular spectator sports in Israel are association football, and basketball. The Israeli Premier League is the country's Premier Football League, and the Israeli Basketball Premier League is the Premier Basketball League. Maccabi Haifa, Maccabi Tel Aviv, Hopal Tel Aviv, and Beitar Jerusalem are the largest football clubs. Maccabi Tel Aviv, Maccabi Haifa and Hopal Tel Aviv have competed in the UEFA Champions League and Hopal Tel Aviv reached the UEFA Cup quarter-finals. 
Israel hosted and won the 1964 AFC Asian Cup, in 1970 the Israel national football team qualified for the FIFA World Cup, the only time it participated in the World Cup. The 1974 Asian Games, held in Tehran, were the last Asian Games in which Israel participated, plagued by the Arab countries that refused to compete with Israel. Israel was excluded from the 1978 Asian Games and since then has not competed in Asian sport events. In 1994, UEFA agreed to admit Israel, and its football teams now compete in Europe. Maccabi Tel Aviv BC has won the European Championship in basketball six times. In 2016, the country was chosen as a host for the Eurobasket 2017. Israel has won nine Olympic medals since its first win in 1992, including a gold medal in windsurfing at the 2004 Summer Olympics. Israel has won over 100 gold medals in the Paralympic Games and is ranked 20th in the all-time medal count. The 1968 Summer Paralympics were hosted by Israel. The Maccabiah Games, an Olympic-style event for Jewish and Israeli athletes, was inaugurated in the 1930s, and has been held every four years since then. Israeli tennis champion Shahar Peer ranked 11th in the world on 31 January 2011. Krav Maga, a martial art developed by Jewish ghetto defenders during the struggle against fascism in Europe, is used by the Israeli security forces and police. Its effectiveness and practical approach to self-defense, have won it widespread admiration, and adherence around the world. Chapter 7 Section 7 Subsection 2 Chess Chess is a leading sport in Israel, and is enjoyed by people of all ages. There are many Israeli grandmasters, and Israeli chess players have won a number of youth world championships. Israel stages an annual international championship and hosted the World Team Chess Championship in 2005. The Ministry of Education and the World Chess Federation agreed upon a project of teaching chess within Israeli schools, and it has been introduced into the curriculum of some schools. The city of Beersheba has become a national chess center, with the game being taught in the city's kindergartens. Owing partly to Soviet immigration, it is home to the largest number of chess grandmasters of any city in the world. The Israeli chess team won the silver medal at the 2008 Chess Olympiad and the bronze, coming in third among 148 teams, at the 2010 Olympiad. Israeli Grandmaster Boris Gelfand won the Chess World Cup 2009 and the 2011 Candidates Tournament for the right to challenge the world champion. He lost the World Chess Championship 2012 to reigning world champion Anand after a speed chess tiebreaker.